Good afternoon, everybody. I'm so glad to have you here on the farm with me today because we're combining two of my favorite topics, and that is animals on the farm and my school teaching experience. So let me back up. You may recognize this quail coop from one of my husband's videos. If you would like to see how to make this, please go check him out on his channel, The More You Grow, if you haven't already seen it. It was really fun and very simple to make this quail coop. And we did it because we are big fans of quail. So there's some obvious reasons you should keep quail. They're delicious, don't tell them. They lay really tasty and beautiful eggs. I had no idea, but you can pickle them and they're actually delicious. So when I joined Eric's family, I joined the Kane family, I was very skeptical about the whole pickled quail egg. I have to be honest with you, the idea of it sounded not so appetizing. But I tried it. Their recipe specifically is delicious. I may try to share some of that with you in a video someday. If I were to share their spices mix that goes in those quail eggs, I would probably be disowned. So I will not be doing that, but their pickled quail eggs in this family are amazing. I am a believer in the quail eggs. And so we make those all the time because these quail lay an egg every day. These girls are very consistent. Beyond the obvious reasons that quail are amazing, I just want to share with you a new idea that you may not have thought of yet. And that is the idea of keeping quail simply as a pet. Okay, so I'm going to take you inside and show you my inside pet quail. Hi guys, so I'm here inside with our pet quail. Um, these are both females, which means they lay eggs, and I call them Lucy and Ethel, because I think it's funny from I Love Lucy, if you're old enough to know what that is. And they usually live in my classroom at school. So these are my classroom pet. Now, I have been a teacher now, this is starting my sixth year. School's just about to start. That's why I wanted to make this video. I have had many different kinds of pets. It's kind of a tradition of mine that I will admit I inherited from my mother, who just recently retired at 28 years. It might have been more than that. I'm sure she will call me out. She and I have had many different kinds of pets. So during my lifetime, I watched her have hamsters. They're great. Rabbits guinea pigs, birds. Now, I will admit, when she retired, she still has a cockatiel named Pepper. She can talk, and she is super cool. But I am now currently a big fan of the pet quail idea. So, hear me out. Number one, they are very, very cool because they lay eggs. The kids think that is super fun. And the fun part about quail is, is they don't always lay eggs at the same time every day. So it's totally possible that your kids in your classroom could see the eggs being laid, which they always thought was super cool. On top of that, they make these cute, sweet little sounds. So I'll try to be quiet here in just a minute and um, let you listen to them chirp. They especially like it, like if you were a kindergarten or pre-K classroom and you sang all the time, they love singing. They will sing with you every single time and they love attention. Those are some of the benefits to having quail. Now, anyone who's had a classroom pet knows that one of the main problems is keeping your classroom at the specific temperature for that pet. So. Almost every classroom pet I've ever had, I had to go to my principal, no matter who they were, and very sweetly beg them to keep my classroom at a certain temperature or within a certain temperature range for my pets. So anything except for, I've also had fish. The problem with having fish is that you have so many wires and all the water to deal with. So if you don't have a sink in your classroom, it is just such a pain to change, to have water changes. And then you have to have wires for their filter and a bubbler. And if you have any kind of tropical fish, you also have to have a tank heater. So you've got to have three cords and it goes everywhere. These need nothing and they are not sensitive to temperature. Quail live in the wild in Texas, which is where we're located. And 
if you know anything about Texas weather, it's crazy. It can be 110, it can be two degrees, and quail generally thrive in both circumstances. So, for example, I get to leave these babies at school on the weekend and know that they will be totally fine. Now, I'm gonna move because their water and food bowls are really small. I do that so that the kids can change them out every day and enjoy doing that, but when I leave over the weekends, I just pop one of these in there and fill it with water to make sure that they don't run out of water while I'm gone for some reason, or it gets so dirty that they don't wanna drink out of it or something. They're currently playing with a piece of squash. This is another benefit to having quail. You can feed them treats and they really love it. And then this dog bowl in the back is actually full of sand. So you can either go buy sand. We live in a very sandy, soiled area. And so all I do is go get a scoop of dirt from outside and put it in here for them because they like to take a nice dirt bath. And so they get in there and they flutter around as they might possibly be doing right now. Um, because of this, I will say the cage I have them in, this is a new one for this year. I had them in a, a bit smaller cage, which was totally fine. Each one of these quail needs about a square foot of space to live happily. That is the recommended amount for each one of these quail. So I had a two square foot cage for them and they were very happy in that. But this is slightly bigger and I wanted to use their old cage for something else. These were on sale on Amazon and we bought them. My husband is also gonna have pet quail this year because I made it look so, like so much fun. And so he's gonna take pet quail to school and I'm gonna take my pet quail to my school as well. On to our final benefit, the ultimate benefit to having quail as a class pet. I pause before I say this because I'm hoping if any of my former students watch this video that they get bored before they get to this point. Because this is why I call them my classroom management quail. So when I brought the quail in the middle of the year last year, I told my students, you can't stress them out too bad or they could die. Now, I know that sounds a little bit intense, but technically it is true. If you stress these birds out too bad, they could eventually, over a long time of being stressed out, die or struggle, and I, I would have taken them home, okay, before any of that happened. But my kids took me very literally, my fourth grade students took me very literally. And so anytime a student yelled or screamed or anything, multiple students around them would go shh and then they would all look over at the quail. I think assuming that they would just drop dead. Which is not what I said. I did not say that they would spontaneously just keel over if you were too loud. But I will also confess I did not correct it. So it was very effective in keeping the classroom at a general lower noise level than I did before I brought the quail. Now, here's another fun little trick you can use if you happen to be a teacher. They lay eggs every day, but they only do that when they're not stressed out. So, at first when I moved them, because of the stress of the move, they did not lay eggs for like a week. I didn't explain that either. So, they thought it was because they were being too loud. And they were a little too loud. And it did help that they thought that the quail weren't laying eggs because they were too loud. And I will confess, the quail started very regularly laying eggs. But if they'd been particularly noisy the day before, I would sometimes come in in the morning and take the eggs from yesterday out and then tell them that they'd been too loud and they needed to be quieter. And if they were really, really good during the day, I put the eggs back in when they weren't paying attention. Um, so anyway, I just learned to make this work for me. Now, if you're not a classroom teacher, but you have young children that are a little bit noisy at home, um, I've heard that that also works. You know, your kids are running out of their house being crazy and you're like, hey, you're stressing out the quail, calm down. Okay, 
Maybe go sit down, do something like read a book, read a book to the quail, sing to the quail, whatever. But I think they're great because of these reasons. So this is why I highly recommend that you get classroom quail or pet quail. I think they're totally underrated. No one notices how adorable they are. They love people. They love the sound of your voice. They will get excited every time you come around. They're very cheap to maintain. Number one, I bought these quail because they're usually used for eating for like $2 a piece. And I've never heard them be more than five, especially this type of quail are very, very common. So they're not expensive. They eat very little. The, I don't clean their cage more than once a week, and that's just kind of like maintenance. And so they're, they're low maintenance, they're not noisy, not expensive, great pets. I just think most people do not see the potential in having pet quail, but they should because they're great. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe. Have fun with your quail! Say hi guys!